Welcome to Electron Line. In the first part, we were able to use the conservation momentum equation to come up with an expression for the product of the momentum of the scattered electron times the speed of light squared being equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the incoming photon, quantity squared, minus twice Planck's constant squared times the frequency of the incoming photon multiplied times the frequency of the exiting photon times the cosine of the scattering angle of the photon plus the product of the Planck's constant times f, the frequency of the scattered photon quantity squared. Now that's a long ways of showing an equation that tells us the difference in the wavelength of the incoming photon and the exiting photon. We need another relationship to make that happen. And that second relationship is the conservation of energy. What we can say is that the energy coming into the, the collision equals the energy coming out of the collision. At the quantum mechanic level, that is the case unless some other photon is, is uh, generated. But since the second photon is now generated, we can say that energy is also conserved in the equation. So what can we do here? Well, we can come up with an equation that describes the energy of the particle after the collision of the proton, or I should say the electron right here, as being the sum of the rest mass energy plus the kinetic energy. So we can say that the energy of the, of the electron is equal to the rest mass energy m sub naught c squared plus the kinetic energy. We can also say that the energy of the electron after the collision can be expressed as this. So we say that the energy is also equal to the square root of the m sub naught c squared squared, that's the rest mass squared, plus the momentum squared times the speed of light squared. And you can see that readily from this diagram here that the energy, which is represented by the hypotenuse, is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two sides of that. We also realize that the kinetic energy gained by the electron is the kinetic energy lost by the photon. And so what we do is we take the energy of the photon before the collision and subtract from that the energy of the photon after the collision, and that will equal the kinetic energy of the electron. So we can say here that energy is equal to the rest mass of the electron plus the difference in the energy of the photon from before and after the collision. Now if we square both sides, if we square this equation and we square that equation, what do we get? Let's try that. So we have energy squared is equal to m sub naught c squared quantity squared plus twice the product of these two, two times m sub naught c squared times hf minus hf prime plus this quantity squared plus so we have hf minus hf prime quantity squared. So that's the left equation squared. Now we're going to square the right equation, which means that e squared is simply equal to what's inside the radical, which is m sub naught c squared quantity squared plus p squared c squared. And you might have guessed it, we're now going to set these two equations equal to one another. And let's see here, I can probably leave this on the left side, leave that on the right side, and we're going to square what's inside the parentheses here. So writing this here, we're going to write e squared is equal to e squared, or this is equal to this. Let's see what we end up with. And maybe what I should do, I'm going to write this on the left side because I have p squared, c squared on the left side over there. So let's do that. So we have m sub naught c squared quantity squared plus p squared c squared is equal to, which is this e squared, is going to equal this e squared, which is m sub naught c squared quantity squared plus two times m sub naught c squared times hf minus hf prime. That's this term right here. And if we square this term, we get plus hf quantity squared minus 2 times the product of these two, which is h squared ff prime, and then plus this term squared, hf prime quantity squared. And of course, when we square this term, we get a positive here. Now we can simplify this one. 
So when we simplify, notice we have an m sub naught c squared squared on both sides, so that cancels out. And is there anything else that cancels out? No, that should do it. All right. Now next, we're going to set, we realize on the left side we have p squared c squared is equal to this. And here we have from the previous video, p squared c squared is equal to this. Which means that they must be equal to each other. So let's go ahead and equate those. So we'll have p squared c squared, p squared c squared added together or equal to one another. So this on the left side becomes... 2, and let me write it here, because this is, so we're going to set p squared c squared equals p squared c squared. So this equation here is it equal to this equation here. So we end up with 2 m sub naught c squared times hf minus hf prime plus hf quantity squared minus 2 h squared f f prime and plus the quantity h f prime squared we're going to set that equal to that side which is h f quantity squared minus 2 h squared f f prime times a cosine of phi and then plus the quantity h f prime quantity squared all right now we can simplify things a little bit more, because notice we have an hf squared on the left side and an hf squared on the right side, so this cancels this. And we have an hf prime squared, hf prime squared, so this cancels this. And notice on the left side we have a minus 2h squared ff prime, and here we have a minus 2h squared ff prime times a cosine of phi. We can move this to the other side. We can leave this here, and so we end up with 2 m sub naught c squared times hf minus hf prime is equal to, when we move this across, that comes positive, so we have 2 h squared ff prime times the quantity 1 minus the cosine of phi. All right. Things are starting to look better. It may not look like that yet, but they are because notice over here that the wave equation says that the frequency times the wavelength equals the speed of the wave. In this case, of course, the speed of light. If we solve this equation for 1 over lambda, that is equal to f over c. So I can take f over c and convert to 1 over lambda, and of course, this is what I'm trying to get to. In order to accomplish that, I'm going to take this equation right here and multiply both sides of the equation by 1 over 2 h squared c squared. Okay? When we do that, first of all, the 2's will disappear. I will be able to get rid of the h's and write it as f over, hmm, let's see, f over c, which can then be written as 1 over lambda. So that's the goal, that's the strategy. So let's go over here and use the rest of the board space to do that. On the left side, notice we have a, the two cancel out. We end up with an m sub naught c squared. I'm going to write m sub naught over c times, let's see here, we have a divide by h. So I'm going to divide one of those by h. I'm going to write as m sub naught hc. And I'll write this as f over c minus f prime over c. So notice very carefully, if we divide the left side here by 2, by h here and h there, the h's cancel out, we have an h in the denominator there, and by c here and a c there, we have f over c, f prime over c, and we end up with, ooh, let's see here, I divide this by c squared, divide this by c, ah, not quite correct. This becomes m sub naught, c over h. That's what I wanted to get to. All right. So we end up with, I'm canceling out one of the c's here, and I'm writing this f over c and f prime over c over here. So the left side is good. How about the right side? This is equal to the 2's cancel out, the h squares cancel out, and let's see here. We have c squared, so that means we're going to end up with, mm, hmm, 
Ah, I got it now. That's what we're going to do. The twos cancel out, the h squares cancel out. We have f over c times f prime over c. So we have still a c squared in the denominator here times 1 minus the cosine of phi. That was quite a mathematical trick. Now, of course, I didn't come up with that trick. I wish I did. Compton did. He came up with a very clever trick to simplify the equation to that. Now, let's see what happens. Now, we're going to make the substitution that f over c can be written as 1 over lambda, and f prime over c can be written as f prime over lambda, or I should say 1 over lambda prime. So this now becomes m sub naught c over h times 1 over lambda minus 1 over lambda prime equals, this will be 1 over lambda times 1 over lambda prime times 1 minus the cosine of phi. All right, next we're going to combine these two, writing them over a common denominator. So we have m sub naught c over h times, here we have lambda prime minus lambda over lambda lambda prime. So we use, write it over a common denominator is equal to 1 over lambda lambda prime times 1 minus the cosine of phi. And now we're almost there because notice that on the left and the right side we have a 1 over lambda lambda prime, which means that those two cancel out. And if we now move the h over here and the m sub naught c down here, we can now write that lambda prime minus lambda is equal to h divided by m sub naught c times the quantity 1 minus the cosine of phi. And this is the equation that defines the change in the wavelength of a photon which is scattered off of an electron. So we have an incoming photon with wavelength lambda, we have an outgoing a scattered photon with wavelength lambda prime, which is a longer wavelength because it lost energy. The difference in the wavelength is going to be equal to Planck's constant divided by the mass of the particle, in this case the mass of the electron, times the speed of light, times 1 minus the cosine of phi. Notice that the difference in the wavelength depends on two things. The mass of the scattered particle, and secondly, the scattering angle of the photon. The larger the scattering angle, anywhere from 0 to 180 degrees, the larger the difference in the, the wavelength of the incoming photon and the outgoing photon. And this is known as the Compton scattering effect and the equation showing the difference of those two wavelengths. And that's how that was done.